All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our uh, tech. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, tech talk series. We'll get started here in a minute. Uh, good seats up front. Please uh, come in, have a seat, have a T-shirt. Uh, Going to be talking about uh, reduced stopping distance and replacement parts. So, I'll uh, give uh, our friends in the back uh, a little bit of time to come up and and find a seat, and we'll get started. Okay, so how many of you are familiar uh, with the reduced stopping distance mandate? Just by a show of hands. You guys heard about it? Uh, operating any new equipment yet that you, you purchased after 2011? Anybody running new brakes on their equipment? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, one of the things that the, that the government mandated uh, in August of 2011 was a reduction in stopping distance. And the whole goal was to make the performance of heavy duty trucks fall a lot more in line with passenger cars. So uh, FEMSA, FMCSA, uh, commissioned a study. And one of the things that they found was that rear end collisions uh, on the road, the incident rate went considerably higher when heavy tractors were involved. So what they found was that with heavy trucks, they were 66% more likely than passenger cars uh, to be a, in, a, uh, in a fatality or fatality related accident. The next thing that they found is when they looked at tractor trailer combinations, the incident rate was even higher, 100%. Then they looked at uh, straight trucks and that number was only 23%. So essentially, the new rules impact tractors only and not straight trucks, okay? So what is the so what, and why do we have the new rule? What is it, what is it by us? Well, by their statistics, they found that after the implementation, we'd save about 227 lives on American highways and avoid another 300 serious uh, injuries. So uh, this is a particularly important statistic, particularly if you're one of those, you know, 527 or your loved ones. So um, the first thing I want to cover with you is what happens uh, with the brake. So the old rule was out here at about uh, 355 feet. The new rule is shorter at about 250 feet. Most vehicles uh, going out the door, dealerships and traveling on the road, stop considerably less than the 250 feet. As a matter of fact, on average, we're in at 215 feet. And a lot of people might ask, well, why is that? Well, as we work with our customers, whether they're Daimler, Volvo, Kenworth, Peterbilt, whomever, they want it to be, number one, as safe as possible. We had the technology to stop shorter than the requirement. Uh, we were able to do it with a technology that was dependable and cost effective. And so we felt that if we were able to introduce safer technologies, it was better for the, uh, for the industry. And that's exactly what we did. The other thing um, that I mentioned a little bit earlier is we're right in the middle. There are two phases of the reduced stopping distance requirement. Phase one went in in August of 2011. That covered most of the, the vehicles on the road. Phase two, which covers all the four by twos and the severe service uh, heavy haul type vehicles, goes in August of this year. And our engineers are working um, to, uh, to make that happen. So one of the things that we wanted to understand is we've been now a year and a half, almost two years uh, after phase one. We said, okay, these vehicles are now ready to be relined and serviced. What happens then? Remarkably, a lot of people don't realize this, but the friction itself, um, and this is an example of the, of the new um, Bendix shoe, a high performance friction shoe. One of the things that you will notice uh, is that the coloration is slightly different. So you guys have all seen uh, uh, brake parts, and you, you notice that the block usually looks the same, right? This is a little bit different. Uh, what I have on my right, your left, uh, is a uh, organic block. On the left-hand side uh, is a semi-metallic block. The reason that we do that, the semi-matte block is there to absorb heat. Heat is the enemy of brakes. You guys all know this, you drive equipment. Brakes get hot, bad things happen, right? So our job is to keep them cool. So we changed this pretty drastically, and we found in order to meet this requirement, we could not do it with the old friction, okay? 
So what happens when we service brakes with uh, outdated technology? So we looked at three different variants. Uh, the first thing that we looked at was your typical 20K aftermarket friction. We found, lo and behold, 311 feet tacked onto this 215. That is a, no other changes. Brake size didn't change, bushings didn't change. Another 96 feet added on, which is significant. That's roughly five car lengths. So if you think back to the goal of NHTSA and our government um, to make a vehicle safer, by simply relining with any of these, we undo that, okay? So the next thing I want to mention is that if you think back to the previous slide, one of the things that we do is work very closely with the vehicle manufacturer, hand in hand. And each vehicle manufacturer has a slightly different requirement. Their suspensions are a little bit different. The wheel bases are a little bit different. And so what we've been able to do is prescribe a solution that's specific uh, to uh, each vehicle manufacturer. So as you look at this, you'll notice that we have the different lining formulations uh, mentioned. What we encourage you to do is new equipment comes due for servicing. Take a look. Uh, there's an indicator by OE as to which friction material you should use. The other thing I want to encourage you to do, and this is a very, very busy chart. I don't expect you to memorize it. But this really lays out for each of the vehicle manufacturers by nameplate in the U.S. the change as part of uh, the mandate exactly what the friction material is as well as the servicing kits. Now you might ask, why is a servicing kit so important? I'll tell you why. If you think back uh, to brakes prior to the reduced stopping distance mandate, they all had plastic bushings. You guys have all seen them, I'm sure. One of the things that we found is that we're putting so much force now into the brake that we had to beef up the bushing. As you think about it, you want to hold very tight tolerances uh, in the brake. And so now, um, what our high performance brakes feature, lo and behold, is a bronze bushing. So if you think for a minute about the metal camshaft reacting against a plastic bushing with a lot more force going in, that plastic bushing would tend to give. A lot of people look at us at, at Bendix and go, oh, you know, you guys have added a lot of costs. We've added some costs, but we believe it's the right thing to do, again, to keep, uh, to keep our roads safer. So if you look back, what we encourage you to do when it's time for servicing, take a look at your vehicle manufacturer's uh, specifications and make sure that you're using the right parts. Um, the other thing I want to uh, encourage you to do, if you go to the Bendix website, uh, we have this brochure, which explains many of the things that I just walked you through. Uh, it has the stopping distance chart, um, and it gives the rationale uh, for the performance improvement and the reduced stopping distance break. And then last but not least, it has the chart uh, that I went through here so that you guys don't have to memorize it. So again, um, just to sort of recap, the real intent, if you think back uh, about the reduced stopping distance mandate, was to save lives and make vehicles uh, on today's road safer. What we absolutely don't want to do is undo all of that goodwill, all of that engineering by using faulty service parts. So the vehicle that you receive from the manufacturer will be in tip-top shape. It'll stop considerably shorter than the 250-foot requirement, very close to most passenger cars. Uh, as an example, and we want to maintain the vehicle at that rate.